Okay. Um, all right, okay, so you're recording. Hi, um, I'm Ana Perez, a member of the Austin Democratic Socialists of America, and I'm here with Chris Harris today to talk about this unfolding Greater Austin Crime Commission narrative of there being a huge crime wave in Austin and this being justification for not defunding the police. Um, so we've had two public budget hearings so far um, and in this most recent one on July 30th we heard a lot more people calling in about um, this huge crime wave that we're experiencing in Austin. Um, oh shit, I was supposed to ask you to introduce yourself. Um, Sounds great. Sorry. Um, yeah, well, Chris, could you maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and um, the work that you do that's related to countering this narrative? Sure. Yeah. Hi, my name is Chris Harris and I'm the director of criminal justice programs at Texas Appleseed. Um, so I'm very much involved in the conversations around uh, defunding and divesting from police, uh, not just in Austin, but around the state of Texas. And, um, and yeah, and very much uh, working with the data around uh, both, both crime as well as police budgets. That's awesome. Um, so I'm sure you heard uh, the Greater Austin Crime Commission President Corby Jastro call into both public budget hearings um, as well as a couple of their employees. Uh, and I think some of the numbers that they're talking about are pretty alarming. Um, they recently released something on their website saying that uh, murder is up 64% and rape is up 50%. Um, so maybe we could unpack some of these numbers and talk about where they're coming from. Sure. Oh, yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so, so yeah, so I think the, uh, particularly as it relates to, to, to murders, um, I think the biggest, thing to, to recognize is just that when you're dealing with the world of small numbers, percentages can be very misleading. Um, uh, if you're talking about going from, um, you know, one to two murders, that's a hundred percent increase and a hundred percent sounds like a lot, right? But in, in, in the world of small numbers, that's one. Um, similarly, when you're talking about Austin, uh, if you're talking about an increase from you know, uh, the low teens to the low 20s, uh, that, you know, can be, a, you know, 50, 60% increase, uh, but you're talking uh, about, you know, ultimately, um, you know, compared to other cities, a very, very small number of incidents. Um, now, obviously, these are all tragedies, and I, you know, and, and, and none of them can be, um, or should be in any way minimized in terms of the, the the impact that they have both on the family, on the community uh, of the people involved. Uh, but to use those numbers as an indication that there is some sort of uh, murder spree is, is very, and especially to compare us in, in the same breath in any way with some of the bigger cities that struggle with, uh, with violent crime and murder in particular um, is really disingenuous and, and just false. Um, the other thing is, in general, um, you know, I think what we've learned from, you know, one of the few things I would say that we've learned well from criminologists and others that study crime patterns regularly is that it is, um, you really cannot take um, anything from a, 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 a small period of time and extrapolate that out. Um, there are many um, unexplained, both upticks and drops in all forms of crime that ultimately are not indicative of a larger pattern, um, that ultimately don't point to any, um, any long-term trend. Um, and so, you know, again, for, um, for them to take a few months out of the year um, and, to, to, and to imply that, that this is a new normal for Austin or, uh, or 
anything like that is is really just not supported by what we know about about crime trends um, in general. Right, uh, I totally agree with that. Um, I guess maybe we could also talk a little bit about the context of crime in Austin and specifically um, the narrative that police are well positioned to help reduce crime. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about what you know about policing in Austin and if it's really even effective in reducing murders um, or death? Yeah, so, you know, what we, <laughs> we don't know a lot about police deterrent, police impacts on deterrence of crime. Um, there is, um, um, there are various studies that have attempted to uh, tell us uh, more about this, um, particularly as it relates to violent crime. Um, those studies are very mixed, um, indicating that um, there may or very well may not be any deterrent effect that police have um, on any form of violence. Um, what we do know is that police are largely responsive uh, when it comes to violence. Um, they very rarely come across it <laughs> and, and intervene uh, to prevent it. Uh, they generally are um, called to the scene after a violent incident has occurred. Uh, and, and now, you know, the task is really to, to find out what happened uh, to ensure that the people that were harmed are made whole uh, and to investigate to ensure that there's accountability for any parties that have caused harm. And, um, and I would say particularly on the, you know, assisting people who have been harmed and helping them uh, be made whole again, um, the police are very poorly <laughs> positioned to do that work and do it well. Um, and I think that is, you know, anecdotally very much backed up by the experiences that have been, um, have been shared and relayed from, from survivors of violence, um, especially in the last uh, couple of months uh, as it relates to their experiences with the police. Um, and so, you know, I think what we do know is that there are a, a myriad of different programs, especially community-based programs um, that are very successful at actually preventing crime um, and preventing particularly violent crime. Things like community-based violence interrupters um, who are generally of the community from the, from the actual neighborhoods where uh, they work from that, um, that build relationships are called to intervene and mediate uh, in disputes and conflicts and actually prevent, <laughs> uh, if not initial incidents, then, then retaliation uh, for those incidents. Um, we know that uh, violence prevention offices uh, that work um, with survivors, that work with um, you know, families experiencing uh, domestic abuse and other forms of gender-based or patriarchal violence um, are more successful at long-term helping to prevent that violence um, and to help survivors um, uh, be safe. Um, and we know that things like parks <laughs> um, that, uh, and, and, and after-school programs and jobs programs for, for youth um, are also very effective at uh, actually preventing um, um, various forms of, of what we call crime. And so um, these are the things ultimately that um, if we're talking about actual alternative approaches to, to public safety that we should be investing in in lieu of police um, in order to, to do that. And, and then obviously there's also just, you know, people being secure in their homes and, and having access to food and healthcare uh, that also actually make people safe and for which so many of our community lack currently. Uh, people that are unhoused, people that are food and housing insecure. Um, these people aren't safe today. <laughs> and, and, and so we need to be looking closely at, you know, how can we invest money to, to increase the, the safety and well-being of those folks outside of the threat of punishment that police officers offer. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. One of the things that you said really stuck with me um, about this kind of crime wave narrative is that 
it's disingenuous and the people promoting it don't really care about Orwell. I don't want to say they don't care, but um, maybe aren't as thinking as critically about um, public safety as they should be, um, especially given the context of this huge pandemic um, in which 287 people have died in Travis County alone. Um, so. Right, they, they are very quick to tout the number of people who have died um, from violence, but but you know far more people have died from this pandemic, um, and 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 have died in in over you know four or five six years worth of of murders uh, in Austin, um, and and will continue to um, and. How, many, how much more investment in public health could we be making now? Uh, one, to prevent future deaths in our city right now from the pandemic we're currently experiencing, as well as to prepare us for potentially the next pandemic and ensure that we're in a position to prevent deaths there. So if these folks really care <laughs> about, about uh, the loss of life, about um, safety, about health, um, it seems to me that they should be advocating for a lot more money into our public health system um, and, and into um, our, our health care in general. Um, so I 100% I agree with that. Great. Um, that makes me think a little bit about some of the proposed budgets uh, amendments that council members have put forward to accomplish some of the goals um, that you talked about in public safety. Are there any that are particularly important um, in kind of reimagining justice for real this time? <laughs> are there any alternative investments that are really important? Is that what you said? Um, amendments to the budget. Oh, yes. So, I mean, I think the, the most crucial thing is that we see uh, immediate um, real divestment uh, from the police budget. Um, money that can then be reinvested into uh, into public health, into community, into uh, these other forms of uh, health and safety, housing um, and, and actual, um, you know, food assistance, um, you know, things people are struggling with right now, especially given the recession uh, created by this pandemic. So, um, so what we really need is real money cut away from this budget right now so that alternatively, these other things can be funded. Um, and, and really the low hanging fruit are all of the vacant positions that the police have been carrying over year after year after year that they keep funding, um, that they haven't been able to fill. So they, they should be cutting all of the particularly sworn vacant positions for, for uniformed officers. Um, all of the uh, training classes for next year uh, should be canceled. Um, we've seen, um, in general, <laughs> uh, I, I have a lot of uh, a lack of faith in in the efficacy of training to overcome the you know brutality um, and tactics, uh, you know racially disparate tactics of the police. Um, that said, what we know now from actually having civilians go into the academy and watch look at the curriculum is that the curriculum is very much training officers uh in a way that is counter to the values of of austin and counter to the values of our city and so the, the entire academy you know should be shut down and uh and completely overhauled um and that means no new cadet classes at least for a year um and they so they should cancel those uh and and there's a good deal of money that's freed up by that process and then thirdly is the police overtime budget. Um, and so, um, you know, what we've seen over the last two months is police completely blow out their overtime budget uh, in order to largely brutalize protesters in the streets. Um, and, and so we should really be cutting uh, into this overtime budget. Um, I mean, ideally all of it, <laughs> but a significant chunk of it either way. Um, and so, you know, again, these are the low hanging fruit that don't actually involve, you know, any sort of cuts to the current staff uh, of the department. Um, and, and that minimum uh, should be adopted in this budget cycle. Um, there's obviously a good deal more that should be cut. 
grassroots leadership released a report today um, that went over a lot of the contracts uh, that the police have, especially in the surveillance and tech areas. And many of these are are unnecessary, undue infringements on on the civil liberties of Austinites and should be canceled as well um, and cut. Um, There's whole units like the mounted unit that we've seen again, repeatedly brutalized protesters, not just here, but around the country um, that should be cut. The narcotics units that overwhelmingly, disparately uh, stop, detain, search, and arrest black and brown people for very low level amounts of drug possession um, and put them in jail and saddle them with records, and criminal histories that set them and their families back for years. Um, should also <laughs> be gone. Uh, they shouldn't, we, we, don't, we don't want and, and don't feel safer for this form of policing. And so um, there, there's a lot that can be done and be done immediately. Um, and, and these are just a start. Great. Um, so it seems like there's a lot of public support for defunding the police um, this budget cycle. But recently, the Greater Austin Crime Commission released a poll um, basically saying that most Austinites support police and do not want to see them defunded this budget cycle. But um, different polls from the city's own budget priorities survey and the Austin Justice Coalition suggest that maybe that's not the case. So could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I think the Austin Justice Commission poll was, was, was pretty overwhelming that um, people do support alternative forms of public safety. Um, many, many Austinites um, do not feel safer with police and don't equate police with safety. Um, and, and that there is substantial, even majority support for uh, cutting the police department in order to invest uh, in these alternatives uh, like mental health first response and substance use crisis first response and housing, especially for uh, those that are unhoused um, and, and harm reduction efforts and other substance use response. So, you know, I think the, the picture is very different than what the Greater Austin Crime Commission is trying to, to, to paint as it relates to public sentiment. Um, and then of course you have the, the expressed will of folks who are actually invested and care about this issue, uh, which is in that case, overwhelmingly in favor of defunding APD. Um, when we look at you know, the level of engagement as it relates to emails and calls the council has received, it's more than they've ever received on any issue ever in the history of this city. Uh, when we talk about, there's been now four different council meetings, um, only three of which <laughs> where, where police funding was explicitly on the budget and the, another where it was literally a one-off grant, which normally would have passed without, without any um, opposition, that have received an, an overwhelming number of calls and amount of testimony explicitly calling to defund the police. Um, and, and I think, um, when you look at, right, both the city survey of budget priorities, as well as the, the WeFund tool that my organization, along with Fair Defense, AJC, and Just Liberty put together, um, again, the folks that are invested and care about this issue are, are all in one direction, which is to defund uh, the police and to do so substantially. And so um, I, I think that you know, it is incumbent on the council to see, um, you know, that, <laughs> that, you know, this will be the issue on which they are judged moving forward. Um, we just had an election, a runoff election in July, uh, where criminal justice was on the ballot, um, and particularly people that want to radically transform the system versus people who represent the status quo. And the people that wanted to radically transform the system won overwhelmingly, despite the fact that it was a runoff election in the middle of July, in the middle of the pandemic. Um, so, and, and also this was an election of the broader county, which is generally more conservative than Austin proper. So, I, you know, I think there is no way to look at, um, you know, uh, public sentiment um, and what's happened over the last two months and think that 
Um, anything short of substantial divestment from the police is going to satisfy the public or protect the current council members from, from a backlash of the polls. Well, I'm pretty optimistic, so. Yeah, me too. Um, you know, we got to keep, we got to keep fighting, but um, yeah. Yeah, so I guess, how can people get plugged in? How can they follow your work? Uh, great question. Well, there's, um, there's really one final opportunity for public comment, uh, and that's on August 12th. Um, so there will be an opportunity to sign up to speak once again at, at the city council meeting. Um, should be starting next week on Monday, uh, which is uh, August 10th, I believe. And so I would encourage everyone uh, to sign up once again uh, to have their voice heard about it. Um, I would also encourage folks to plug into the groups that are doing the um, the on the ground, you know, uh, events. Um, groups like Austin DSA, uh, like Communities of Color United, Grassroots Leadership, and Austin Justice Coalition, um, and and actually join one of these events either in person or, or online um, to to indicate your support. And then also, you know, continue to call and email your council member and the mayor. Um, let them know that you vote. <laughs> let them know that, you know, this will be the issue on which, uh, on which you will decide, you know, whether they earn your vote next time. Um, and, and really to, to let folks understand as well that, um, you know, we don't equate the police with necessarily with safety, right? And, um, and we don't necessarily, one, see a tie between um, what, what, what the police capture as crime statistics and our safety. Um, we don't see a connection between the police and feeling more secure in general uh, in, our, in our presence, our physical presence. And we also see the harm that police regularly do uh, and what they've done to the protesters over the last couple of months um, and what they've done for decades <laughs> in black and brown and poor communities um, in, in their disparate treatment, uh, in the brutality and misconduct that people are regularly subjected to. Um, and, and so we, we really need to decouple these notions um, to the maximum extent possible. Awesome. Thank well, thank you. you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Really appreciate it.